Hey everyone, it's February 2025 and the Crossover 25 full release is right around the corner. This video is 9 games that will now be playable on Mac using Crossover 25. Let's check it out. First up is Dead Space. I'm happy to report that Dead Space runs great on Mac using Crossover 25. Prior to the release of the Crossover 25 beta, Dead Space had a game-breaking bug that would basically make Isaac and his surroundings invisible. In my opinion, games where you can't see anything aren't as fun as games where you can see everything. Luckily, Crossover 25 will release with over 5,000 individual fixes to wine, and it looks like one of them fixes the bug. Now you can play Dead Space in all its gory glory. The game needs at least 16 gigabytes of RAM, and if you're on an M1 chip, make sure you lower your screen resolution to under 1080p and use AMD FSR upscaling. For your bottle's advanced settings, use D3D Metal and M-Sync for best performance. Next is the serene climbing game Jusant. Up until recently, this Unreal Engine 5 game had major graphical and lighting issues, but now that we have the full release of the Game Porting Toolkit 2.0 built into Crossover, the game runs perfectly out of the box. Jusant is a bit heavy to run, so I definitely recommend using AMD upscaling for best performance. Also, for a major FPS boost, make sure to set global illumination and shadows to low. For your bottle's advanced settings, make sure to use D3D Metal and M-Sync. You'll also need a copy of Crossover, which has the full release of the Game Porting Toolkit 2.0, so either Crossover Preview or Crossover 25. Up next, we have No Rest for the Wicked, an incredible early access game from the devs who made Ori and the Blind Forest and Ori and the Will of the Wisps. This is another graphically intense game, so it's pretty sweet that it's playable on Mac. For hardware, I recommend an M1 Pro chip or above with at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. For your bottle's advanced settings, make sure to use D3D Metal and M-Sync for best performance. Next is the new hit indie title, I Am Your Beast. This fast-paced, arcade-style beat-em-up is a blast to play and should run great on any Apple Silicon Mac. For your bottle's advanced settings, make sure to use D3D Metal and M-Sync for best performance. Or, if you have access to the Crossover 25 beta, you can try running the game using DXMT. This game is a lot of fun, especially for those who love speedrunning, so I highly recommend giving it a try. Got a dead one. Up next is the Souls-like hack and slash game the first Berserker. While the full game doesn't release until March, the demo is now available to play and runs surprisingly well through Crawl. Wait, this game costs $60? I recommend a Mac with an M1 Pro chip or higher and 16 gigabytes of RAM to play the game at an enjoyable FPS. For your bottle's advanced settings, make sure to use D3D Metal and M-Sync for best performance. Next, is Alan Wake Remastered. While it's no Alan Wake 2, the first Alan Wake is still a classic, and it's even better now that it can be played in 4K with the remastered version. I tested this one mainly on an M4 Mac Mini, and it ran super well. I gotta say, Alan has been through some pretty disturbing stuff and should probably see a therapist. I saw a therapist once. She told me to stop playing so many Mac games. That was my last session. <clears throat> 
I recommend running this game on an M1 chip or higher. For your bottle's advanced settings, make sure to use D3D Metal and M-Sync for best performance. Also, keep in mind that this game is only available on the Epic Games Store. The non-remastered version is on Steam and is unplayable on Mac, so stick with the remaster. Next is the latest entry in the Life is Strange series, Life is Strange Double Exposure. While the game will work using Crossover 24, I highly recommend waiting until Crossover 25 is out to play this. Why? Well, Crossover 25 will have the latest full release version of D3D Metal built in, and it really does run the game better. This Unreal Engine 5 game is incredibly graphically demanding. You'll need at least 16 gigabytes of RAM and a pro chip or higher to get acceptable performance. I highly recommend lowering both the resolution scale and the secondary resolution scale by at least 30% for best performance. If you must, you can switch shadows and reflections to low, which will boost FPS greatly, but totally wrecks the visuals. This isn't a bug, this is just how the game is, and it's not great. But overall, on a powerful Mac, the game is more than playable. For your bottle's advanced settings, make sure to use D3D Metal and M-Sync for best performance. If you love death, and you love doors, do I have a game for you. I'm currently on my first playthrough of Death's Door, and boy howdy am I enjoying it. While it technically already worked with Crossover 24 using D3D Metal, with Crossover 25, Death's Door is now playable with DXMT. Previously, the game suffered from consistent micro stutters, which was less than ideal. But with DXMT and a 60 FPS frame rate cap, those micro stutters are gone and the game runs smooth as butter. I do like butter. For your bottle's advanced settings, make sure to use DXMT and M-Sync for best performance. Here's how to cap your game at 60 FPS when using DXMT. So go to your DXMT bottle, make sure it's selected. I'm going to click Open C Drive. Then I'm going to go one folder back in the path to my Steam folder. Right-click cxbottle.configuration, open with text edit. We're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom, and then I'm going to paste this command in, which reads quotation mark dxmt underscore config equals d3d11 dot preferred max frame rate, quotation equals 60 in quotations. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it at the very bottom, file, save, and we're ready to go. Last but not least, we have God of War Ragnarok. Holy sh**, I didn't think it was possible. God of War Ragnarok absolutely slaps on Mac. You'll need two things to get this game running. One is a copy of Crossover 25, because you'll need the full release of the Game Boarding Toolkit 2.0. Second, you'll need an FC16 game patch created by the incredibly talented Mac Gaming Patches. Make sure to check out their channel. This gameplay is God of War running on a base model M4 Mac Mini. How sick is that? For your bottle's advanced settings, make sure to use D3D Metal and M-Sync for best performance. Here's how to patch the game. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my web browser and go to applegamingwiki.com. In the search bar, I'm going to search God of War Ragnarok and go to the game page. Next, I'm going to click the F16C patch link and click download this file. Scroll down, click agree and download, and choose the version of the game you're running. I'm going to do God of War 1.8 because that's the latest version of the game. Once the download is complete, I'm going to go to my downloads folder. I'm going to unzip the patch. The password is PCGW. So here's our unzipped patch, and we want to rename it to GOWR. Capital G, capital W, capital R, with an undercase O. So next, I'm going to make a new finder window, and we're going to find our God of War game folder. For me, it's located on an external drive, Steam library, Steam apps, common, 
And then here's the God of War Ragnarok file. I'm going to open it and replace the God of War EXC that's in here with my patch. Now we're ready to launch the game. Oh no! Freya, we're not your enemy! Freya, what? No! So those are nine PC games that now work on Mac using Codeweaver's Crossover 25. Let me know in the comments if you've gotten any other games running, and make sure to like and subscribe for more crossover content. Thanks for watching.